So here we are. A trunk is being loaded up a ramp with a 20.0 degree slope. The trunk is subjected to a forward tension force of 375.0 newtons that is situated at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal that is parallel with the slope of the ramp. Find the horizontal and vertical components of the force uh, F, or the, the tension T there that's in the rope there. So notice there's a lot of things going on. First of all, we talk about tension. We learned what tension was in the last lesson, so we have to know that. And then we have a ramp and a slope and angles and all this stuff. Let me give you some advice. Don't solve these problems without drawing a picture. We always draw a picture. All right, so your pictures don't have to be good because none of mine are, believe me. So what we have here is a rope. <clears throat> I'm sorry, a ramp. Not a rope, a ramp. Here is a ramp. Uh, and we are told that this ramp is uh, has a slope of 20 degrees. So we got to put that somewhere. So we'll put 20 degrees. Put a little right angle here if you want to. That's a ramp. All right. Now what we're doing is we're loading a trunk up the ramp. So we're going to put some kind of box here. Usually I draw boxes for almost everything. So there's my trunk, right? And uh, the trunk is subjected to uh, sub subjected to a forward force, tension force, which means we're pulling on a rope of 375 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees, but that 30 degree angle is above the horizontal that's parallel with the slope of the ramp. So you have to read it because it's telling you how the angle is situated relative to the ramp. So basically what we have here is we have some uh, uh, kind of like tension force which we can draw as a vector, right? It's 375.0 newtons. And what is the angle of this thing? It's telling me that the angle is, we'll read it exactly, uh, situated at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal that's parallel with the slope of the ramp. So there's parallel with the slope of the ramp, and it's telling you that this is 30.0 degrees. But the 30 degree angle is, is relative basically to the, uh, to, the, to the flat surface of the ramp, but the flat surface of the ramp itself is already 20 degrees of, kind of as an angle above the horizontal. And then it asks you specifically find the horizontal and vertical components of that. Another way of thinking of that is, this force is uh, in this situation here, then what would be the equivalent horizontal and vertical uh, forces that would comprise this thing up? So what we need to do is draw, now that we have the, uh, the actual picture of what we have, we need to boil this down into something a little simpler without as much mess going on so that we can figure out what to do. So what we basically have here is a situation where we have this force kind of up like this. And of course, there's there's always an invisible x, y axis. Always, you can just put it anywhere. So here's x and here's y. And so we have some force. And of course, of course, it's acting on a trunk or whatever, which can be at the origin. Now, we know that this force here uh, is this tension in a rope is 375.0 newtons. Now, what is the angle of this thing? You see, this angle is 30 degrees down to the parallel to the nature of the ramp, but then an additional 20 degrees to the horizontal. So that means that this angle right here, which is this is the angle I really want, the total angle to the horizontal is 50.0 degrees. That is what you need to get from this, uh, basically this entire problem. It's to understand the, rela the relationship of these angles and that you add them together to figure out that the total angle is 50 degrees. Uh, there. And so basically if you take this arrow and you decompose it into a vertical force, then this is going to be F sub Y. And then the horizontal, which you can either draw up here or down here, is like there, there's a uh, uh, F sub X right here. So basically what you have is a horizontal force acting on this box, box and a vertical force, which is also, I've drawn it over here, but it's really being applied to the box because you can slide these things around however you want, but the triangle is oriented where you have a pull and then a push up from the bottom, and these two forces together will behave exactly the same way as the single force acting at this angle. What are the horizontal and vertical components? So now that we have it into a drawing like this, something we can work with, then we can basically write down the answer. We can say that the uh, horizontal component, this vector length, the side of this triangle, essentially, is what? It is the total length of, the, of this side, which is the force, 375, and since we're projecting into the horizontal direction, it's multiplied by the cosine of whatever this angle is. And this angle is a positive 50 degrees. So write it as 50.0 degrees. This is the same thing as saying the cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
so the cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. We're just writing it in a different way because this is the way I want you to think about it. Horizontal component is equal to the total force cut down by this chopping function, cosine of 50 degrees, gives you this uh, part of the triangle right here. All right, and so what you get is 375, and when you take the cosine of 50 degrees, you get 0 0.643, and so then F sub X, 375 times this gives you 241, of course we're rounding here, newtons, 241 newtons. Now how do we find the uh, vertical component? F sub Y, which is the length of this triangle, which is acting up right here, is gonna be equal to the total force, 375, but not times the cosine, because now we're trying to project and get the vertical side, so it's times the sine of the same angle, 50.0 degrees. And this is the same thing as saying the sine of this angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, if you were to divide it over. Sine of this angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, so it's the same exact relation. And then 375, and then what's the sine of 50 degrees? 0 0.766, and so F sub Y, when we take 375 times 0 0.766, we get 287 newtons, and this is the vertical component. So this is the answer to the problem, because the problem just said, uh, find the horizontal and vertical components of F, and here it is. If we have a ramp, and if we are uh, understanding that this ramp is 20 degrees above the horizontal, and if we are pulling this rope at a 30 degrees above the local uh, plane of this ramp, then we know that this thing is acting at a 50 degree angle from the ground, which is what we have drawn right here. Then this single force acting on this trunk, it will move the trunk in a certain way, okay? But that, the way in which this block moves will be exactly the same as if we replace the force acting, the single force, with two forces, one acting horizontally, one acting vertically, again, on the trunk. The horizontal force will be 241, the vertical force will be 287. But then you say, well, wait a minute, okay? If I add 241 plus 287, this is gonna be already over 400 newtons. This is gonna be already over, uh, over 500 newtons. So how can that be? Because the X plus the Y, that's already more force than I had here. It's way more, so that, that can't be right. But this is the fallacy of that. When you add forces that are not in the same direction, you don't just add the numbers. Okay, of course, if the forces are lined up, you add them because they're, they're acting in the same direction. But if they're in opposition to each other, in other words, the angle is 180 degrees, we end up subtracting them. We don't add them at all, we subtract them. And if any other angle is between these two forces, then you have to use trigonometry to figure out the equivalent force. So if you have two situations, one situation with a single force acting with this amount of newtons at this angle, then the block will move a certain way. If you have a separate situation with the same block with two separate forces, with uh, you know 241 in the X and 287 in the Y, two forces acting on the block, that block is gonna move the exact same way as the original block because the equivalent components uh, in the X and Y direction are exactly equivalent to what this original force is doing. So for all practical purposes, we're just learning here, but the reason we do this is because to, to solve any problems, we always replace uh, forces acting at an angle with their equivalent components so we can operate in the X and the Y direction separately. That's just like we did before when we did and studied motion. We considered the X motion and the Y motion separately. When we deal with forces, we consider the Y, uh, the y force and the X force separately. So we're just breaking them down here. All right, so now what I'd like you to do, practice this yourself, make sure you get the right answers. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue to build your skills with decomposing forces. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.